Got us all. I think I was still hearing myself Me. in the back. Maybe we should sing Must Be Santa one more time. Yeah, I'm still hearing myself all in the All together. Back. Must be Santa. Must be Santa. Must be Santa. Santa Claus. <laughs> that was so cute. <sighs> She's amazing. Is she saying like this? Yes. What she yelled. Must, must be Santa. Santa. Must be Santa. Must <laughs> Coming to you from 125 Carver in Waco, Texas, it's the Riverside Weekly. We hope your time with us today is thought-provoking, spiritually challenging, and a life-changing experience. Our discussions are fun, real, and at times very uncomfortable. We highly encourage all of our guests and listeners to like and subscribe, and please ring the bell. Now, here are your hosts, Pastor Cello and Pastor Mia. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. It's Wednesday. Everybody together. Mar, mar, mar. <laughs> Only because There's we don't have a button yet. We'll get one. Huh? We'll get one. We're going to get a button, you guys. It's in the cart. Yes, it's in the cart. What's it called? Tell me what it's called, though. A hype button. Oh, a, hype button yeah. a hype button, you guys. <laughs> I've never known the name of that, and I'm so excited that uh, Wesley is joining us today because he looked it up just for us, and um, we've been doing the mar, mar, mar for, like, ever, and now we actually get to have a hype button about it. But welcome, everybody. Welcome, uh, Randall and Stephanie Fred. Yay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Round of applause for you. Thank, thank you for having and us. And then, oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. And then welcome, Wesley. We are so glad you're here. Happy the spouse, here. El Spouso, we love it. <laughs> um, so I decided today that we should do a family podcast because I feel like this is going to be the Hatfields and the McCoys. So I brought us all together to try to um, minimize that because if it had just been Randall, me, and Fran, then it probably would have been some boxing gloves from the back scene. So I brought all of us to even it out, right? So you're like, oh, my God, what are we talking about? So I'm going to drop the bomb and let you know that today, um, since tomorrow is really huge for you, why don't, why don't you tell us about that first, and then we'll talk about the subject. Tell us what's happening tomorrow. So tomorrow I will be going to have spine surgery tomorrow. Um, it's been something I've been dealing with for the last couple of years. Um, it's going to be my second spine surgery, but this time it's a little bit more invasive. I'm going to get some nice titanium hardware put in my Ooh, You're going to have the bionic back. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bionic. Um, it's a little scary. Uh, a little nervous, a little worried about it. Um, not just me, but just the burden that it is on, on my family. So, but yeah, it's a... Uh, because we always say it's an unnatural. So you're going to be carrying the load? Something, Something like that. that. Okay, but is this not a thing? No. Not at all. No, I'm very well taken care of. Oh, oh. whoa. whoa. <laughs> we all need a man like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> in case you don't have one, you can come take notes from Randall Fred. All right. Oh, oh, okay. Cliff notes. We'll cut some of those things out then, I would say. I can give them that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, so I brought you on today because um, last week, our podcast, we did a podcast together and we were talking about um, this season. And uh, you said it before. You said that you did have this surgery before, but for some reason, this time, a second time is more frightening for you and, or, you know, um, it seems like it's, anxiety or anxiousness more and I want to know really from your wife why that is not from you because you're going to lie to us and tell us what you want us to hear but your spouse is usually truthful because they're the ones who see you and they're the ones who know you more than anything okay so tell us why you think that he's do I, do I get a rebuttal uh, no <laughs> see what I mean see what I, did no. I, see what I mean? even get the way in mm, let's let's see what she says okay. let's see no, what she says it's, Simply of how long he has to rest. 
how mm. long he's going to be down and he can't do the things that he thinks he has to do. Um, and the fact that full recovery is a year, um, wow. start to finish before he's fully healed. So he'll be out six weeks from work tentatively and not there. We'll re- evaluate whether he works from home or he gets to go back to the office. But full round, some of the things that he does, he can't do for a year. Wow. This is like mind blowing. Sorry, I don't have a mind blowing button on there, but how, how about that one? That is mind blowing here. Look. Yeah, I was like, wow. Is there a good one for that one? Here, how about this one? How about this one? This one. I got this one right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you said what you said. And I'm so glad that I said not him by himself because you pegged the topic for today. Mm. Today's topic is rest. Honestly. Because I literally was praying for you uh, as well as uh, another one of our church members. And um, they, too, have the same issue you have. Um, uh, They actually had brain surgery and having to deal with rest. And so as I was praying, this is what I asked the Lord. I'm just like, Lord, why is it that this man cannot rest? And I thought, you know what? He's not going to tell me that, but his wife will know. And you know, that's the question. That's the topic today is why don't you rest? Why can't you rest? And then I brought my cousin because I know the question wouldn't be for her. Why can't you rest? But why, um, why would we want to? And sometimes, sometimes she always sees the opposite. I, I don't know why, but she does. So for me, the question for her would be you is why can't you rest? And for her is why should we or why shouldn't we rest right there are things that we shouldn't she she just was she killed it with the boundaries so i was like she's got to take i got to have her take on this too okay Okay. Now you get to rebuttal. Now you're rebuttal. I mean, honestly, that that is true. I mean, that, that's an, I mean for me, example. So you know, I've known about the surgery for the last you know two months, and so we've been working to get to that point. And you know, work has a lot on my plate, and I'm focusing on a lot, and I'm really going above and beyond and knocking out a ton of tasks, a ton of stuff. I mean, not just at work, just at home, just to have that peace of mind whenever I'm not able to do it. That I know it's accomplished. I know it's done. That way my wife doesn't have to worry about, you know, the house being torn apart or she can't find something. And so it's just really just trying to stay ahead of the curve, trying to stay ahead of the game and making sure that not only just, I mean, I put myself last any anytime, and it doesn't matter. I make sure everybody else is taken care of, and then I'll worry about me. So ensuring that, you know, she has the things that she needs in order to function whenever I can't do it. Because, I mean, it's simplest things as, like, not being able to pick up my kids. Not being able to help them, you know, get dressed in the morning, get out of bed to, you know. I mean, I'll be able to get out of bed, but it's going to be a struggle for the first couple of weeks. So it's a big, it's a big challenge. And, you know, she's been getting on to me a lot lately. It's just like, you know, let the kids walk, you know, stop picking them up, stop doing the things that you, that you're doing. But it's also hard because. Laying on the floor in their bedroom to put them to bed. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's this, it's those moments when it, when Aunt Louise walks in the room and, you know, she says, Daddy, can you just come lay with me? Because I know in a few weeks I won't be able to do that. And it's tough and it's hard. And, you know, I don't like, I don't, it's a struggle because seeing my kids see me struggle is hard on me because I don't want to be that man for them. I want to be the person that is always going to be there, always willing to jump to do whatever they need to do. And it's hard 
just being down. Which is why it's necessary for you to stop, yeah. to rest, to fully heal, because this is just a season, and you'll be able to do those things if you adhere to doctor's orders. You, you know, it, it's only temporary. Yeah. And, and we know what role you play, you know, in y'all's lives and our lives. I mean, you're you're our go-to guy. If, if this guy can't take care of me, I know you're, you're my number one. You're my, my lifeline, you know. Uh, you, you're so resourceful. Being that I'm your mother-in-law, I'm not on pause, and I know that, you know. Um, but we also know that <clears throat> how much you're admired, you know, you're, you're having four daughters is a crazy life. And the weekend that y'all were gone, we were like, Lord Jesus, um, <laughs> is it Sunday night at 7 o'clock yet? Because, um, and it was only Sunday at 7 a.m. Yeah, the, the strong-willed four-year-old, you know, who's the boss of oh, yeah. everybody, um, you know, she – we know that, you know, she's active in all the things she does because of you. Um, you know, she doesn't sit idle. She doesn't like naps. You know, I got to see what's going on. I got to know who that is. FOMO. Well, she gets it from her dad. Yeah, she, but, she gets that but from But also, me. before you had all these responsibilities that you have, you know, you're single, young, <clears throat> whatever it may be, were you a just sit there and watch TV or read a book kind of guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, every... Before me and Steph got together, like literally when I had just gotten off a flight whenever we had we were in Sam's and we just like literally had a conversation and I wasn't even supposed to be in Texas. And it just happened there, you know, hey, I'm just gonna fly back to see family to do that. I mean, my life was always on the road, always traveling, always gone. And and that's how I've always been. If I need to do something like I'm out the door five, six o'clock in the morning getting it done and it's just that's always been me. But you're five or six o'clock in the morning. That's fine if you're an early riser. But then you're also nine, ten o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Those are long days that wear you down. You yeah. know. Um, I, but but also on the other side too, where rest is necessary, you can also become idle though and get stuck in that. You know, either you're moving or you're not moving. You know, and so you you do have to find a, a balance. Um, I am one of those people that um, I'm going to go to sleep right now, close my eyes, and, and within two minutes, you're not going to get a response from me uh, unless you try to wake me up and I'm not ready. To. Well, I mean, I mean, not come, ready. Come 8 o'clock at night, you know, I could sit there on the couch and watch two, three hours of The Office, no problem. But if the sun's up, I want to I wanna be doing something. You know, cleaning the this. sun's awake, so I need to be awake. Exactly. And it's not because I have this I feel like I have to get this accomplished, or I have to do that. I just like to stay busy. I'm not. I'm not going to read a book. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> but I'm right I, there with you. Yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, I, you not know, if it's outside, time, working on the chicken coop, you know, in the garden, whatever it may be, I, I want to be active. Even my wife always tells me, you know, when I'm going to the Dollar Tree or I'm going to Kohl's to walk around for three hours and buy one thing. <laughs> Um, you don't have to come with me, but I'm not just going to stay at home watching TV. Yeah. I'd rather be up, be out, doing something, and so that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, especially if that's that's who you are and that's who you are. So oh. I know that you're going to struggle, yeah. right? See, and that's going to be my for me. That's going to be the biggest struggle. I mean, not working, I, I'm okay with that, you know, but not having the ability to. I mean, I'm not okay <laughs> not working. <laughs> But I understand that, you know, I've done everything. I mean, at the end of the day, I've done everything that I can to help and support my team. And if they just can't figure it out, then it'll be there when I get back. Yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, I just. I mean, I, I did. I'm, I'm not okay not working. It's just I like to be productive. And then being told that he has to absolutely not work and not have contact with those people because of paperwork and things like that. It hit him hard. He was like, they called me in the office today, and I'm like, yeah, because you can't answer that phone call and just. Everyone knows. Yeah. That you are a lot of <coughs> boundaries. Boundaries. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of people who go to boundaries. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing, but I would say that it could be possible that the reason why it didn't work the first time is because you didn't hear the doctor's <coughs> note, 
and so we feel that we are revisiting it at such a time, and not that there's anything wrong with that, because now, you know, we know, and we know you, uh, we know what it takes to. This is why taking a whole week off of work and not going I mean, back. Obviously, <laughs> we can't do the work side of it, but it's going to take the village yeah. to yeah. help, you know, fulfill the duties that he has, that he has, uh, and maybe, you know, some things are like, oh, too bad, I ain't the daddy, or I'm going to be back with you. <laughs> uh, they're going to get to know a little bit more. Okay, Macy. Where again, you know, he goes back to the ground so, in case you hadn't noticed, this was an intervention more than it was <laughs> about rest, obviously. <laughs> no, not, not not seriously. Not to work. Yeah, but... I at, know how to sleep. No, no, really, you don't. You really don't. And I say that not because I know you like that, but because I am you. Yeah. I was a workaholic for many years and didn't get to see my kids grow up. And, oof, don't cry, Mia. But I didn't get to see my kids grow up because I went to work at 6 a.m. and I didn't get off till 11 p.m. Why? Because I felt like I needed to do that to support my family while my husband was going through school. And I was like, well, he can get the kids when he gets out of school and he can take care of them. He can feed them. He was a great dad, right? So I felt like my job and my only one, number one job was to provide for the family, and if that took me all day to keep us ahead, then that's what I was going to do, right? But at the same time, we forget that um, we're not machines. Yeah, you're going to be titanium. Yeah, you get to be the bionic man. Boo-hoo, I want to be the bionic man, but I'm not hating. <laughs> I'm not, because my son is bionic as well, too. He now has a titanium uh, femur to hold him together, right? And he's got metal in his, a metal plate in his hand and a metal plate in his something else. You know, he's got all these pieces and I'm like, oh, I want to be the bionic man. But look what happened for him to get there. And that's what's going to happen to you if you don't rest. And the question, you know, this is, this is what made me think about that all together is, you know, we're going and 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 going. And we're just like a machine. We're going to wear down. The parts are going to wear down. And do we want them to wear down ahead of time? Or do we want them to last forever? And that's that's the thing. Yeah. I think that throughout this process, you know, as much as you're going to hate it, you'll also realize how nice it is to take your time off. I know you, you bought the Xbox to be able to... <laughs> You know, ha fill your time with that. You'll have to do all the side missions because yeah. otherwise you'll beat it real quick. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, I think that it'll it will actually give you an opportunity to realize, you know, I can take a step back. Now, that's something you do a good job because you are, when I say take a step back, uh, yeah, knowing your limits. Uh, as far as, I mean, Randall's not a workaholic. He works a lot, but he's also been a coach, you know, for the, the girls in softball. Uh, he goes to every dance thing they have. He's at every family event that we have going on. So, you know, that's something that he's done a real good job of, is that work-life balance of being at everything. And, you know, it's, when I spent my 20 years in, re in retail, I missed everything. You know, hmm. unless it happened to be on a day off or I just happened to open that morning, I, I wasn't there. I now I have a job that I can do. Yeah. But that's, you know, he works a lot, but he doesn't miss it. So that's something I definitely commend him. I mean, I, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, some sometimes I don't feel that, I mean, not that I miss things. I mean, I try to be there as much as possible for my kids. But, you know, where where my time gets sacrificed is a time where, you know, I could be in bed at night resting. Because, you know, sometimes I do have to, you know, get up at, you know, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, go to work, or I'm working until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes, you know. It's few and far between these days, but you know, I think for me, where where my life really started to shift was when I was working in Temple. You know, I loved the job, but I hated the hours, and it was always the drive sucked. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I mean, I had to be at the office at seven o'clock, so I mean, I had to be out of the house by six, and sometimes I wouldn't get home till seven, eight o'clock at night, and you know, and it was terrible, and not seeing the family, not seeing the kids, and. You know, we had struggled for, you know, a while trying to have a kid. And, you know, I remember one day I was, you know, driving to the office and I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm, 
when I finally made the decision that I was tired of the job, that's when I really felt God moving our lives and that's when we found out we were pregnant with that Luis. But it wasn't until I made the decision that I can't do this anymore. I can't be working 78 hours a week. You know, I can't be at the office at 7 o'clock in the morning and be there till you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night or even sleeping at the office to work on overnight projects. Like, it was, it was terrible. I hated it. I mean, I, it didn't feel like I missed a lot, but I did miss a lot. And granted, we only had two kids at the time. And, you know, my current job, you know, I remember when I, after I, you know, first got there, I remember telling Steph I hated it because it was, it wasn't what I was used to. It, the, the time, I mean, I had we more free eight time. To five, like, yeah, like it was left. eight to five and that was it. Yeah. And I wasn't used to that life and it was a struggle. And I, I mean, I literally would go home and tell us like, I made a mistake. <laughs> like, yeah. he's like i have to spend more time with my family well, well, what is this what is this thing called life i don't know about it what yeah. but you know when when i finally got over that hurdle and then you know having that and it really made me understand the work-life balance and that's where it really changed for me because i wasn't missing anything you know i was a coach for my kids softball team you know both my daughters were doing dance and you know then we had eloise and you know she was a terror from the time she was two months old and but you know having that work-life balance, and I know for me it's going to be a struggle for these next couple weeks. It, it really is. But it's just going to be a struggle because not physically being able to do things for myself is where, where, is where I'm going to struggle. You know, I'm okay with not being at work and, you know, having that time to to sit in my, you know, bed, play my Xbox and all that, but, like, I can only do that for so long. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm the person, like... I'll make sure to buy you some puzzles. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I may do it. I may not. I, I mean, I mean, you, you, yeah. You, you can ask her you can like, pick him up and take him on a drive. yeah. Like, I mean, that's like that's my thing. Like on the weekends, Eloise is up just as early as me, oh, yeah. and same as Olivia. Like, Bye. we'll leave the house, me and both of them, and like we'll be gone for hours. I'll wake up. Hey, where y'all at? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like we'll we'll Other go do our errands. We'll store, go grocery store. store like like we'll go Home Depot. Like we'll we will get everything done on the weekends where everybody else is still in bed. Yeah. And by the time twelve o'clock hits, like we've accomplished everything, and that's just. That's just Every us. Up, yeah. Up. And yeah. that's just how I, and so that's for me is going to be the big part because I can't drive. I won't be able to drive. So just not being able to get in my truck and go do what I want to do when I want to do it, like that's a struggle. But I also have to understand like my body will need stuff. I mean, I will need to heal. And I mean, literally like they're going to cut me open, put a titanium, you know, face in my spine, screw that in and put me over my back and give me rods and screws in my back. So like it's, it's pretty invasive. Will you shut off the metal detector? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Can we can we call you Pin? What is it? What was that that movie? It was like Pinhead or Pin Needle. You know, he had all these pins all in his head and stuff. Like, is that what it was? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> never saw it. Never saw the movie. You know, just saw the the. I didn't the, the thank you, so. thank you, because I didn't need it. Well, I I do want to say this. You know, I I was thinking about the um again, like I said, I was praying for you and the other you know people and just thinking in my head, rest is so huge and so critical. And saying what I said earlier about us, you know, being there for the longevity of it. If we don't rest now, then we can't make it the full, you know, the full marathon or whatever, you know, whatever the life is um, that we're supposed to be living. Even though we're so busy going and going and going and going and going all the time. That's why, you know, she asked, uh, about, uh, what I was doing on a Sunday night, you know, a Sunday afternoon. And I'm like, uh, she was like, did you nap? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I'm like, no, actually I started to clean my room and then I just decided to rest. And that's something that I've never done. And you know, that's, I love my wife for many reasons, but I can just go and go and go and go and go. And she will, you know, after we've been cleaning, the shed minutes. for 30 minutes, an hour, minutes. she's done. And she will say... I'm not done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. You're done at that moment. <laughs> I need a snack. You're done at that I moment. Need a, I need a... Eloise. I need something to drink. I will, I will keep going. And she's like, you're not putting that up. You're not doing that. We're resting. Pet the dog. Go and talk so to the we'll, chicken. We'll like, stop. And so she is very good at in, her break. In, in her her break. break. If yes. you are with me, you will be fed and you will have a break. Because if not, then there's going to be a problem. She clearly did not know Sonny Lozano. And that's okay. No, I'm just kidding. I, I did okay. find this today. That, tell us. That I tell me. It says, be diligent about rest. 
Don't compromise this area for the sake of achievement or acquisition. Prioritize protecting your mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit so you can flourish in the way that God has caused you to show up. Sleep soundly and get enough sleep. Embrace whatever rhythms required in order to calm your mind and care for your soul. God honors your time when you prioritize his command to rest. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Psalms 4. I was going to say that. that. That's where I actually was going with that, is that, and I'll wrap it up with this, is that I feel like in the season that we're in, I, I believe that, you're going to laugh because you probably didn't listen to last week's podcast, but um, we talked about this. Um, so at a time where I, God was really working on me to change things in my life, um, I was yelling all the time at my kids and, you know, just really didn't want to do that anymore. Didn't want to be that person anymore. Just ask God to change everything in me. And I remember every time I would go to yell, I'd lose my voice. Still to this day, it happens now. And most of the times I just had a really loud bellowing voice. Um, and I learned how to whistle out of that because I couldn't yell anymore. I was losing my voice. And I remember seeking God about that. And he was like, well, you just wouldn't shut up. So I had to take your voice from you when I need you to be quiet. That's the same with you. If you don't want to rest and you won't rest, then he can take that from you too. And that's Lie not, down, yes, son. yes. And you don't take time for yourself. Yes, your work and balance and all that is okay. But you said so yourself at the beginning of this podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't put myself first. Okay. God's like, okay, you're going to rest and it's going to be for a year and you're going to take care of yourself because you have an entire family and an, to take care of and you have an entire village that wants to take care of you. And that's not just for you. Don't, don't think I'm picking on you. You're here. So I get to pick on you, but there are other people out there like you like me that didn't rest before, like Wesley, when he was in that industry, you know, finally he stepped out of there. That's why I wanted him on it because I knew he would be like, Oh, I'm the first to tell you because I was in that life and I'm so glad I'm not there anymore. And he's proud of it. And I love that for him. I love that he, he can say, you know, no, no, because that's a word you don't even know. Well, not only that, if you think about, you know, Yes, make yourself the priority, but if, you know, your family is what matters most to you, then you will make yourself the priority because the longer, um, but the more you do by not restricting yourself, then the longer that it takes and then the longer it takes you to get back if, if you can, you know. And we want you to be speedy, healing, recovery because um, all of us still in those shoes um, are going to... Yeah, because they're going to be hearing some hard no's. No, not Randall. We can't do that for you. <laughs> and that is, a, that is a word you're going to have to learn in this year. And I believe God just is setting you apart for that time to teach you that word. And um, just in my praying for you as well as anybody else that doesn't rest, you know, that is something. And I, and I think she helped me so much by telling me about boundaries because I – said it for the first time in my life the other day somebody asked me to to take something and I said I didn't say no the first time I don't even know what I said I was like oh well uh, you know him haw and then the next one I was like well maybe no maybe not and then the third time they asked me I was like okay no and I was like did I, just say that? <laughs> I was like did I just say that didn't I say that the other night? I was like, oh my gosh, cousin, you have freed me. Yep. I said, no, ah! and I didn't know how to do that, you know, but us go, 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 go people don't know how to rest. Now the next step is just taking that. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But that's the thing is that I, I think I, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> all right, let me get those out. <laughs> but I think I'm learning just like you. So it's not just a season you're going through. It's a season that quite a few people are going through. It's just that, you know, you have to take the time and do it. And, and I will. Necessary. Necessary. I love that. That's her new word. Necessary. necessary. 
Boundaries are necessary. Yeah. Rest is necessary. Yeah, honestly. And we're we're gonna. I think we're just gonna learn in this season. Everybody together is not just those, but I think there's other things that we're learning to do that we've never done before. And and I think um, in your rest time and in everyone else's rest time, I think that's when we take the time and we listen to God because we never had the time to sit down and listen. It's what I said in the New Year's, uh, uh, on New Year's Day when I was preaching. I said, you know, God is saying for us to um, be vigilant, but in the silence. I was talking about a record and a break, and in that break is a silence. And in that silence is where we can hear God move. And that's really what's going to happen to you. I, I believe that there's something big coming for you, and you're having to rest to be ready for that. And, and I don't know what that is, but I, I, that's just what I believe. I mean, I, I don't know what it is for me either, but I would say when I first started down this journey, I was not excited about it. It had me worried. I was stressed. But now I'm comfortable and I feel good with where I'm at and where I'm going. And I feel like I'm, I know I'm not prepared enough for it, but at the end of the day, what's going to come is going to come and let's just take it in stride. And I'm excited for the time that I, I'm going to be able to have just to sit down, not do anything, not have to worry about anything, and just, I mean, a little worries here and there, but <laughs> nothing really like, nothing, I'm not stressing about anything, because at the end of the day, like, my recovery is going to have to be number one, and I know that I've got plenty of support, I've got plenty of family that's going to be able to be there and help fill in the gap, so that's, that, that for me, that was never the worry, it was never the worry, for me, it's just, what is the surgery going to do to me, and how that length of time is going to put me down or how long that's going to occur. I'm trying to ski in December. <laughs> I'm trying to go skiing. But if I can't, then I can't. It is what it is. All right. All right. Um, I will say two things. Uh, one thing, you can never be prepared, fully prepared. Um, when I had my youngest, uh, I was knew it was going to be an um, inducement. So I washed every dish, every blanket, everything, every curtain. I did it all, dusted everything, made meals, pre-packed, put it all in the freezer, everything, I promise you so that I could be down for a week because school was going to start the following week and I needed to get the other three to their first day of school. And I came home to a baby shower and a, a house full of people. I can't even tell you how upset I was at that. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? I, it didn't matter what I did. And I can't be ungrateful for that. But at the same time, I was like, ah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and the other I thing just is everything. yes. That's how I get when my kids yes. tear my house up. I'm like, bro, y'all just saw me clean all of it. Yes, you gonna drag all the toys. You see what I mean? Ah. Ooh, that's gonna be a hard one for you Ooh, to overcome. Um, that's gonna mm, just yeah. what, just give him some blinders. He can put them on. To, cause it, it yeah, it doesn't bother me. I'm like, they're playing. We'll clean up before we go to bed. But he wants to clean up every five minutes, and I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, yes. I mean, and there's gonna be some things that are that are different, you know. And other people are gonna have to step up and and you know they're not going to get to have their latte before they go to school or whatever you know, know what and donut, but thank you fine. it'll be Jeez. fine i was I mean, like <laughs> i'm excited about my dad coming over making breakfast in the morning oh. <laughs> Look, i'm gonna say this i was salty for a long time because whenever my wife used to not work in the school and my dad lived with us for a little bit my dad used to cook breakfast for her every day wow. and i'm like bro like burrito. i can't get like a not burrito i'm you know i'm a little salty for a little while but you know <laughs> hey Okay, so I will I will end with this then. I will say that, you know, to everybody out there that is going through something like that and needs to rest, please make sure you use your lifelines out there and the village that's around you. And if you don't have a village, reach out to some of us because we'll be here because that is the one thing my son said. You know, when he broke his femur, uh, nobody came to visit him. Nobody uh, called to check on him. And he said he lost social skills because people didn't even come. And he was on a second floor, so he couldn't come down to visit anybody. They would have to go up, but nobody came. Yeah. And that's sad, you know, that that we were there, but we live with him, you know. So that wasn't like you came literally to see me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would say that if you uh, are having to go through that or you know somebody that having to go through that, please check on them. And I say this all the time, you know. It, it does take a village. It does a need text, to, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, and a call, phone call. Have to go play video games three times a week. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 He's okay. just letting you know ahead of time. For Randall. Yeah. Yeah. For Randall. Bring it. Bring it. Controller. Yeah, I can just 
that ring. <laughs> All right. Anyone, anybody, have, anybody have anything else to say? No. All right. So I'm glad that you survived the intervention. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> we just wanted to talk about rest, and I thought, what a perfect way to bring all of you, because they they see the outside of it. She sees the inside of it, and we knew that you were going to want to rebuttal. So <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining us. We hope that you get some rest. Um, if you're going through this season of boundaries, what did you say? Uh, boundaries and rest, whatever those two things look like for you, then you need to take the time to do that because God is really trying to speak to us in these moments and in these seasons that we go through, whether they're dry, whether they're the wilderness, whether they're rest, whether they're boundaries, whatever it is, you need to take the time to listen in the silence because he's really trying to speak to us. All right. Well, we'll be praying for you and everybody else out there be praying for him after you get this podcast today. You're going to say something? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's got a lot to say, y'all. She she actually said if you're looking to help like feed them. Oh yeah. Uh, that she doesn't want anything that has to be baked to put in the oven because that's not what she does. Um, Eloise likes We're Chick Fil A. Um, the girls like to have their caramel macchiatos. I mean, I'm just oh, being real. And dough. Those are kolaches Those are and, things yeah, that, yeah. that he does yeah. for them. Nobody's so. gonna feed my kids because they're bougie. <laughs> they that's their love language. <laughs> Listen. It, it, look, okay. It, it, we're very well taken care of. It, it, it is my fault. Well I love that. We, I love We that. literally were home the other day, and Eloise wanted Chick fil A, so of course I drove all the way back. Oh Chick-fil-A. my goodness. Dad, what's she going to do? Y'all, let me just say this. Macy, Macy was watching a movie with me. She loves to watch my laptop because we don't have TVs in our room. And um, so I had my laptop open. She got all prepared, and she said, Grandma, I want a snack. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, well, I have this right here. Granola, mm, I want bananas. And I said, Macy, I don't think we have bananas. We'll go get me some. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, excuse me? And I looked at my husband. I said, did you hear her say that? He said, you have her that way. I was like, oh. Ugh. So totally get you, yeah. totally understand. So. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. We'll keep you updated on Randall. And uh, if you think about him tomorrow, please pray for him tomorrow. What time is the surgery? Oh, starts at 7 o'clock. All right. All right. We'll be praying for him. And and, uh, you can text. And for us, too, that have to pick up his weight. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's going to take the whole village. So if you're available, you can dial. No, I'm just teasing. (laughs) But anyway, thank you guys for joining us. And thank you guys for coming on. And not being afraid to answer any questions that we have. You're welcome. You're welcome. We'll be there for you, honestly. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Wesley, for joining us today. We loved it. And thanks, cousin, for coming back. All right. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Thank you for listening to the Riverside Weekly. Download the Riverside Waco app to stay connected and follow us on all social media sites at the Riverside Waco. This podcast is made possible by the givers of Riverside Community Church. Production and engineer provided by Capital G and RTV in Waco, Texas.